My um, topic is um, the question, what is the AI AD revolution? The artificial intelligence, intelligence augmented design revolution. It's a um, human-machine interaction in architectural design processes. And the question how an AI can help a new architectural language um, emerge and I will look at autonomous design programs. So we, um, we just came from, um, from, a, from a time where we simulate everything and um, the newest uh, thing in architecture is the generative design um, where a computer generates new forms um, just by um, given aims and rules. So we, we are able um, to do um, decision, uh, decisions that are just um, visual based and um, the design becomes more intuif uh, intuitive again. I will look to um, um, artificial creativity. Um, so the question um, about the input data and the output data. For example, this is an AI painting on the right side um, where the algorithm was fed with oil paintings and the output is again an oil painting. But there's also a different project from a, from a man, he's called um, Tom White, he's from New Zealand, and he does something like reverse engineering. That means he, um, he used images as input data to train an AI, um, which worked then together with a drawing program that always looked if the image is recognized by the AI or not. So the, um, the machine vision classifier, he helps to, um, to look how the AI sees our world. And so the pictures are just, um, for us, messy and uh, not understandable, but an AI can understand, okay, this is a forklift, this is a ruler, or this is uh, a starfish. Um, there is, um, for predictive drawing, there's a tool um, which is called TensorFlow by um, Google. And um, it works like this. You um, the, the plan of the program is to recognize um, hand drawings and doodles. Um, there's a um, briefing or a task, for example, draw a rainbow, and uh, a termination of the drawing process, which means you have to do it in under 20 seconds. And uh, um, the result is a, a big data set with uh, classified object names of the doodles, um, the doodles, the hand drawings. And um, what is very m interesting for me is um, that there's also the drawing process within these 20 seconds. Um, so the TensorFlow um, uses the database which was created in QuickDraw and um, or, uh, also has a, has a small briefing or a task. Um, for example, draw a bird in this video. Um, and then with every, with every line you draw, um, the AI gives you proposals for your next steps or predictions and what the um, finished image could could look like, um, and it changes with every with every um, with every line that I draw, and does new new predictions for the for the fi for the final picture. And I want to use that that um, kind of uh, logic to uh, create a design assistant that um, uses examples uh, which was which it learned from from architects before. So the question is, what do architects design and how do they design it? Um, that means um, at the first phase of the algorithm intelligence aided design program, we have a creative briefing and then um, the, uh, the, the program observes and analyzes the architect's work in the background to find um, repetitive patterns in his work and his approaches to, to a new project. And in the background, it translates all the moves to, to um, algorithms uh, with uh, single steps, which can be classified. So the, the data is the, is the working process of the, of the architect. Um, in the second, second phase, the assistance phase, um, the data gets weighted. So um, we have again the briefing that the program knows what, what we're going to do. And it's very important that it, um, during the, the process of the architects working, um, he uh, the program always does um, requests um, to um, understand what, what step the architect was doing. Um, and so um, after, 
a few while when um, the the program does proposals during the work because it it's going to to learn the um, the the work of the architect. Um, it's it does um, auto completions for a short short term and uh, gives vis visual suggestions for the architect based on mutations and connections of the uh, algorithms uh, which were already learned. Um, so the architect again decides on visual basis in which direction he wants to go or if he wants to draw on on his own and uh, look to a later suggestion. Um, and this helps to um, the, the program to understand how the, how the architect makes uh, certain decisions. Um, so in the third fast, the, the working fast where we use the data, um, all our, our weights and biases in the um, artificial neural network are already weighted and defined. So it's clear um, for the program when we have a certain input what kind of working processes are possible to emerge from that input and in which different directions the, the final design could, could go. Um, so um, the program is able to create new algorithms, for example, for the category um, sports hall, a theater, or a, or a museum. For the, for the fo formal correctness of the drafts at the end, um, I used the same example as, as Tom White. It's like um, a kind of reinforcement learning or try and error, where um, the first program generates, the designer program, um, generates different, different designs. And um, we have a copy of this program, which uses, uh, which we use as an image classifier that looks if the image is recognized correctly. If yes, it's the final design proposal, and if not, it's going to um, to evolve the the design of the first program. So at the end, when we have the final design proposal, um, we have um, humans again to ev evaluate on visual basis because it's the last instance where um, uh, designing architecture and real physics architecture are connected. Um, and there I, I have two different um, kinds of evaluation proposals. So um, the first one is a, is a multi a buses democratic um, proposal where um, a social media, for example, helps to evaluate um, on visual basis um, what the users like, what they, what they don't like. Um, so um, the program can decide um, for or against a, a particular design strategy. strategy. And um, the other approach is a, a single approach, like very uh, personal um, user-generated design. Um, where we have a step-by-step -step approximation um, to merge individual um, design proposals. Um, for example, this is a program um, that's called Biomorpha, where you just um, click on visual basis which images you like, and it starts evolving and merging um, the, different, the different approaches um, to, to give you new new output. So my conclusion is, um, that if the architect remains um, the creative authority or intermediary, um, we have a, a chance to, um, to find a new formal language of architecture, which is uh, emerged from a human-machine collaboration. Um, but if not, if um, we, just, um, we just let the people design their own architecture, um, we're going to be stuck in a mirror cabinet where um, the people, due to conditioning, um, always decide for the architecture they already know and so we, we're not going to, to find a new architectural language. <laughs>